So today I want to show you the Turncrafter Commander model number KWL-1018VS lathe. Uh, this is from Penn State Industries. You can also get it on Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description. But this is a variable speed lathe. Uh, I went with this lathe for several reasons. One reason being that it had a lot of the features that I wanted uh, without getting too high in the price range. Uh, so this particular lathe is, uh, has 18 inches between centers. It has a 10 inch swing on it. But the main thing that I was after was the variable speed. And so I got into a, a mini or a mid-size lathe uh, with a variable speed at a decent price. So today I just want to show you some things that I am, uh, or that this lathe offers as far as features go. I want to go over the, some of the things that need to be put onto the lathe uh, for right Right now, I've got several things not on the lathe that comes with it. Uh, so for instance, this is the cover for the pulley housing or the belt housing. Uh, it's got two belts on it or two pulleys. It's a two pulley system. So the first setup is a uh, smaller pulley on bottom with a larger pulley on, um, excuse me, the smaller pulley on top, larger pulley on the bottom. And the range for that is 500 to 1800 RPMs. Now the set, uh, second set of pulleys you have the larger pulley on the top and the smaller on the bottom and that is considered the b setting which gives you a thousand to 3600 rpm uh, in that particular setting and all it, all that covers that is just plastic housing and it goes on with a screw so i am going to as we go along in this video i'm going to put this thing together as we as we talk so that is all that is holding this plastic piece on. And the other things that I, I really like about this system is the quick releases or the quick lever actions on this particular lathe. I have an older model lathe, uh, not a turn crafter, but it's an older model that it takes a wrench to adjust anything. So here on the headstock, this is the wheel that we will put on. It's got a couple of set screws after you get it set into place and it actually spins backwards I'm so we'll get it get it started okay and we've got several Allen wrenches here and once you get that on there nice and snug we'll just tighten it down with the set screws so it does not vibrate off So you'll have to take this off to be able to get this plastic housing off, uh, which is kind of a pain, but um, that's just the way it is. Uh, it does not come with this knob installed. This is a door to access the bottom set of pulleys for the belt system. And so you have to actually put that on after it comes, uh, after, after it's delivered. And so let me just go over a few things that this lathe came with. So we've got a six inch uh, tool rest and a 12 inch tool rest. Uh, both of these tool rests comes with the lathe. It also comes with a spur, uh, spur center for the headstock. It also comes with a heavy duty live center for the tailstock. The spindle lock. Um, if you can see this on camera, it's got a lock and unlocked position. And what that's for, we'll go ahead and put it in now. It goes in the top and it just spins all the way down. Right now I cannot move this. So what you do is you pull it up, quarter turn, and now it's free to move. And it has indexing on the spindle itself. So if you wanted to do like, so now that's locked. So now if you had a spindle and you wanted to do some router fluting or something like that, uh, you can do, do your flute and then you can unlock it, turn it to the next position of the index, and you can keep routing all the way around the spindle. Also, this is good for when you're putting a chuck on, you wanna keep this locked so it doesn't move. 
um, and so you can makes it easier to put the chuck on. Now you don't want to start the lathe if this is in a locked position. Uh, they do not recommend that. So we've got that installed. The tool rest, uh, you can put the 6 or the 12 on. It comes with the 4 inch uh, face plate for bowl turning. This comes on the lathe already installed. I've already took, taken this off. I'm just going to slide the uh, spur spur drive right into the to the head side. And for demonstration purposes, I want to show you this is the uh, knockout bar. So that just that's to knock out your different centers, and it's got a nice little hole here in the front to. Uh, keep that out of the way. Now you'll see a couple of holes on the back side of these. Um, so you've got a couple of holes here and a couple of holes here and this is to install these little clips for the uh, power cord. And so we're just going to actually put these on while we're in the video. So I want to go here, want to go here, and that's, you got two screws per clip, and the other one will go on this side, and that's just to wrap the cord around it. Okay, so next we've got the little handle here. that It's got a a screw in the middle and this basically is just free to spin and what that's for is to attach to the tailstock wheel and so now I can run this in and out easily And the last thing that is to be installed is this tool caddy or tool rest. And that is to hold the different uh, centers that you have. And I guess also small pin turning tools. Uh, because of the height here, I don't think you want to store uh, you know, big, long lathe tools there. So we'll go ahead and put this on. Okay, so we've got that on, and what this is for is to hold the different live centers that you may have, or different things like tool rest, and that sort of thing. Okay, so here we're looking at the lathe. This did come with a damaged display. Uh, this was caused in, or this happened in the shipping. And so PSI is really good with their customer service. So they're just shipping out uh, the whole display itself. It's just four screws and two wires. And so they're shipping that out uh, to me. So that was no problem getting that replaced. But as far as everything else goes, the lathe really looks like it's very well made and so far i am i'm pretty pleased with it um and so like i was saying the tool rest and everything is uh cast iron the beds cast iron the tail stock cast iron headstock cast iron everything is cast iron uh, and the wheels uh are metal on both ends and so we've got the spindle lock, like I was saying. So if we wanted to take and it's in the unlock position now, so we can pull up on this and turn it. So now it's locked. If you can see that it's in the locked position. And so now if I try to turn this, it's not going to turn. And you can see some of the numbers on the spindle itself. So I'm turning the wheel right here. It will not turn. And so you have different indexing on this. So if I unlock this, it's in the 
unlock position. Now I can turn this to whatever number I want, depending on what I'm working with. If I've got something that, um, like I'm, like I said, fluting or routing flutes and a spindle or something, I can go to a certain index point, lock the spindle, and it finds the uh, index there, and it will not move. So now you can do your your work or whatever you need to do, and then unlock it and turn it to the to the next one, or uh, put it in the lock position, and then you can uh, put the chuck on that you want to uh, attach to this without this turning, just so it's easier. This is the first lathe that I've had uh, that's got one of these. That my other lathe does not have one and it's uh, a little aggravating, but this makes it a lot easier. And so this is where we keep the knockout bar. Uh, this is what comes with it. And so that is what's used to knock out the different centers. And it's got a nice little place to store that. Uh, this is the door that I was mentioning earlier uh, to access the pulleys. And so you have to, or I had to, may not be on all of them, but this is what I had to install and all that does is just keeps that door closed. In order to change the belt on the pulley system, this is the motor mount adjustment. So what you do is loosen this, raise this up to raise the motor up and that will loosen the belt. You can change it over to the other pulley, bring this back down to tighten it and then tighten it up with this lever here. And so the tool rest, you're able to turn it like so to do bowl turnings. Uh, and so that's pretty solid. It's not moving. Pretty easy to release and tighten back down. The tailstock moves real easy. And so you can lock that down. where you need it and that's solid. Now on the tailstock it has a uh, measurement or it has one through four as far as inches go on the actual, I don't know what you call this, but it's the tailstock and this is the piece that comes out. So if I wanted to, for instance, Okay, put it on say one inch. And I wanted to install a drill chuck. Well then I could drill in say one inch. And there you go. So that's, that's pretty handy. Uh, as far as anything else, you have a light here. Um, the variable speed control is here on off switch and then you have your little caddy with all the tools on it and I have not put the other clip on it but this is where that other clip would go for the power cord if you were to transport it somewhere. Um, it's, it has rubber feet on it and they're adjustable or you could take those out and put screws right through the base uh, onto a table. It has these nice pull out handles on each side to make it easier to transport. On the back side, this is where you would access the wiring for the uh, digital display the readout and also where all of the like the motor and everything is wired to so it's just hidden behind this door this is the power portion of the lathe uh, you've got uh, this goes to uh, an outlet this comes from uh, the motor itself and this is actually the um, 
I think that is the digital display there. And then you have a reset button here on the back side if you happen to need that. So overall, I think it's a pretty good lathe. Um, once we get this replaced, I'll know more about it. I uh, have not used this yet. So just my initial thought and look of the whole thing, um, I think it's gonna be a pretty good lathe. I'm excited about it. So uh, like I said, this is not PSI's fault. This is the shipping, uh, this is a shipping issue. So, but they're gonna replace this, no charge, uh, to send me a new one of these, obviously, uh, but there were no questions asked. Said, okay, we'll send you one right out, no problem. So, big thumbs up for customer support. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at, here's the box that, that it came in. It's about 95 pounds in shipping. And so, here are the specs. This is the 10 inch variable speed, and the model number that I've got is the KWL 1018 VS. And so the specs on it, we got a three quarter horse uh, variable speed, 110. It's got the two pulley system. Uh, it's a one inch by eight TPI headstock. Number two, Morris taper. Like I said, 18 inch between centers, a four inch face plate, two Morris taper tail stocks. Uh, a number two, excuse me, number two, Morris taper tail stock. Cast iron construction. Uh, the whole thing is 31 inches long by seven and a quarter wide. And it comes with uh, a six inch and a 12 inch tool rest and a pair of safety goggles. So here is our, what they list as advanced features. So uh, extra turning capacity with the 10 inch swing, uh, three quarter horse motor, get the variable speed, digital readout, indexing positions, positions on the spindle with the lock. Uh, we got a work lamp with an 18 inch flex cable tool and cord caddies, uh, easy belt removal and speed change, convenient built-in handles, and includes a heavy-duty live tailstock center. So overall, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, if you have any questions about it, leave me a comment down below. Uh, if I missed something uh, that's, you know, oh, one thing I do that I did miss, it does have an option for a bed extender. So there's an extender that you can put on here uh, to extend the length of the bed to give you more than the 18 inch between center uh, capacity. And there is one more thing that I do want to do is show you how this lines up center to center. So let me put this back in here. Okay. All right, so we've got that in there. All right, let me loosen this up, if I can do this one-handed. Okay. So I've got this, see if I can get a good background on this. All right, so I'm just gonna reel this in. So that's pretty, pretty close. Uh, I see no issues with that whatsoever. So pretty good there, right out of the box. Hadn't it never been used before. So uh, that tail stock does slide really easy. So anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know, and I will be glad to uh, answer any of your questions. Leave me a comment down below. Thanks, guys. Uh, and we will see you next time. Later.